Hi guys, in news that won't surprise most people subscribed to this channel and others like it, there is a growing majority of people in the United Kingdom that believe Britain should be part of the EU and not outside it. Now, highly respected polling expert Sir John Curtis analysed the figures and explained that since 2017 there has been a continued decline in support for Brexit. It doesn't look like anything is going to stop that either. Have a listen to what he had to say when he was interviewed by LBC. Well, it certainly seems to be true that during the course of this year, there's been a gradual uh, move in the direction of uh, rather more people saying that perhaps we should be inside the EU uh, rather than outside. It's not dramatic. It's nothing on like the kind of scale of the collapsing conservative fortunes that we saw in the wake of the reaction of the financial markets to uh, Liz Truss's fiscal event. But it's there. So if you take the average of the last half dozen polls that ask people what you would do if you were asked to choose between uh, rejoining the European Union and staying out. At the moment, we've got 57% of people saying that they would vote to rejoin, on average 43% to stay out. And it's now quite a while. I uh, certainly have to go back to earlier this year before you find even an individual poll that has a majority of people saying that we should be staying out. Second key indicator we've got, and this is one that goes all the way back, to the autumn of 2016, just after the referendum. YouGov keep on asking people, in hindsight, was the decision to leave the European Union right or wrong? On average now, last half dozen of those readings, 52% of people say that it was wrong, 35% that it was right. Now, on that measure, we've tended to have um, uh, more people saying it was wrong than right um, ever since the 2017 general election. But that gap has certainly widened. And again, we've seen it widen during the course of this year. So there certainly is some indication, I don't want to put any further than that, that um, support for Brexit has declined during the course of this year. Um, it was never anything more than something like a 50-50 shot and the country being divided down the middle. But just the first signs that perhaps we are beginning to move to a non-trivial degree in, in the direction of perhaps we'd be better off inside. There you have it. Now, as he said, since 2016, following the referendum, support for Brexit began to decline. And in 2017, it, it continued that decline as well. Um, there's a number of things to say about this. Now, first of all, polling is one thing. A referendum is something completely different. And there isn't a referendum at the moment. So whatever answers people give to pollsters uh, could change if there was a referendum. I think it's also important, and I've mentioned this before, not to confuse not liking Brexit with wanting to rejoin the European Union. Those things are separate because many people are upset about Brexit. Many people want it to go away. They're tired of hearing about Brexit, but that does not automatically transfer into, well, we want to rejoin the EU because many people believe that it will eventually sort itself out. They, they understand it was a mistake to leave. They understand Brexit has been a disaster, but they, they're not they're convinced in some way that, well, if we just stick with it, it may improve. Obviously, it will not. Being outside the single market um, puts you in a, in a worse position than being inside the single market, especially if, you're if most of your trade is with the single market. It makes much more sense to be inside. And being outside and attempting to uh, live with that... Um, just, it just gets worse and worse because the European Union impose new restrictions and um, change rules. And if you're not part of that process, if you're not part of the decision making process, you have to follow the rules. You're not you're following rules, not making them. Um, I think the process to rejoin needs a much higher threshold as well. What I'm talking about here is the margin 50, 53 or 52, whatever he was saying here in the 50s and low 50s is not sufficient you need something like 70 plus of a you know 70% support 30% against um rejoining and of course you need the political parties on board and i'm talking about also the conservative party until the conservatives jettison the brexiteers um you're going to have this risk that the whole thing could come crashing down and it's important that when the process to rejoin or join as the case may be um, the European Union, you need 
consensus in the country. You need people who were you know, hardline Brexiteers. They need to be against it now. That, that's what you need on board because... The European Union is also is the arbiter here. They're going to decide whether the UK joins or not. And they're not going to be willing to accept a member who's sitting on the fence or who is at risk of pulling the plug after a couple of years. Um, there are people within the EU who don't want the UK to join. There are people who do. Um, those people also have to be convinced. It's not just in the UK. So there is a mountain to climb. I don't think it's impossible. I think it's difficult. It requires a lot of heavy lifting. But at the moment, we have both the Labour Party and the Conservatives not talking about it, uh, keeping it at arm's, dist at arm's length. And until that changes, I, I think it's going to be very difficult to, to rejoin. And I think it's important also for us commentators, people online, is to, to continue to highlight the failures of Brexit. We need to convince more and more ordinary people that it has been a failure and that the solution is to uh, to rejoin. Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think about all of this. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot.